everybody, it's Dr. Rick checking in on you. This is another episode of Riding with Rick, latest and current events and what's going on, what's trending, what conversations are popping uh, in the black community. You know the routine, if you believe in what we're doing in community work and service and research and all of the programs, if not, check out the videos on this site. Check out the official website for the Odyssey Project. Uh, Google Dr. Rick Wallace, Rick Wallace PhD, whatever, and just see for yourself what we're doing. Uh, but we definitely need your support. We need your love. Um, this work is absolutely necessary. I shared a video earlier today about African-American adolescent young adult male violence. Uh, check that video out. It's so vital that we understand that because it's something we can change, but it's gonna take uh, the community. On that note, Karen tried it as Karens always do, and it didn't turn out too well for her. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see the video. I was just actually sitting over my guys at the cigar lounge and pulled up my phone and it was on there. And um, I don't know if it was a phone store, a post office kiosk or whatever, but there was a black lady behind the desk and it shows Karen upset about something to decide she's gonna go behind the desk and whooped this sister. Well, it didn't go well. First of all, she got took down with one of the best takedowns I've seen. This takedown was MMA worthy. It was smooth. It was, I mean, it was, I mean, perfectly executed. Took down. She tried to get up. She got kicked in the head. And the sister turned around and reached for the chair. I said, oh man, she finna get the chair. But a white guy came in and grabbed Karen and drug her out of there uh, right before she got the chair. Uh, what, what's crazy behind this is the psychology behind it. We always discuss the psychology of what's going on with blacks, why we react to things, why we're triggered by things why we tend to behave certain ways. That's this constant narrative of the docile Negro. If I'm not mistaken, it was Langston Hughes that said, be careful when we no longer want to be compliant or docile. And I think we're at that point. Not that we haven't been, because I've seen some molly whopping and some butt kicking my whole life. You know, I personally choked a white guy at the bank and he went to jail because that privilege that they carry or they think they have or the right they think they have to dominate spaces and do whatever they want to, they will will do things. And then the crazy thing is the moment they start getting that ass whooping, all of a sudden it's, my, oh my God, oh my God, what are you doing? Why, why? They'll, look, they'll holler why in a minute. You hit me and you're asking why you're getting this ass whooping. I think it was Tupac on, uh, this is how we ride on our enemies that said, our fuckers love to scream peace after they start some shit. Well, we have to look at the psychopathy of whites and understand that you know we we love to talk about all the mental issues the trauma and everything about blacks we gotta understand that's a level of psychopathy that's always been there uh they've always wanted to seize and take stuff that didn't belong to them that's why they've colonized so much of the planet is because they think they have a right and i mean they have gone in and it hasn't just been against people of color. They were seizing. You got to go through, I mean, all the way back from ba uh, Babylonians seized and conquered by the Chaldeans. And uh, then you got the Chaldeans conquered by 
the Persians, and you got the Persians conquered by the Greeks, and then you got the Greeks conquered by the Romans. And then they just start to branch that out, and everybody feels they have the right to take something if they have the power to take it. And what they're finding out is while they have economic power, they don't have the power to violate our space. And while I will continuously say that what we're seeing, what we're seeing in physical resistance also needs to be executed in economic resistance, political resistance, social resistance. We need to start standing up for ourselves. We need to start acting in unison. We need to start collaborating in efforts. We need to start unifying in how we move because that's the key. That's the thing that they have been trying to stop from day one. Uh, it was J. Edgar Hoover. You hear me talk about this a lot. When he was interviewed doing his sit uh, as the FBI director of the FBI, he was interviewed and he was asked what was the greatest threat to national security. Uh, we're in the middle of a Cold War. You got China as an up and coming power. You got we just had just come out the Cuban Missile Crisis. You got all kind of stuff going on in the Middle East and the Arab world. And this man said black unity. And if you look at it, he wasn't just talking because if you look at the efforts of the FBI and the Hoover, if you look at the energy and the resources that were spent to keep black people from unifying, to keep black people from coming together, COINTELPRO, uh, to infiltrate uh, any organization that was unifying, the Black Nationalist Party, the Black Panther Party. Uh, there were hits put out on those who had the capacity to unify. They understand the power of us unifying more than we do. And that's the thing that I want to convince you guys to do is to really truly ask yourself, what could we possibly do? What could we possibly do if we were to unify? What would we do if we start to collaborate in group, group economics, not just across the board, but vertically? We start to create our own manufacturing, our own distribution, our own retail. Uh, dyn I mean, totally dominating any industry in which we dominate spending. If we're going to spend our money in it, we need to own it. And when we start doing that, the seafood industry, we outspend them nine to one in the seafood industry. Uh, we need to be on that. We, we, in a $15 billion um, beauty supply industry, we spend 96% of that. We literally, our money goes, we're talking 14.4 billion into a $15 billion industry on 3% absolutely unnecessary but we have to collaborate we have to come together we have to pool our resources we can't compete individual and that's what we do we got a lot of brilliant business minds but we're all out here trying to do it on our own we're all out here each doing it on our own and we're competing against people with a much deeper pockets that will collaborate on top of it they don't even have to like each other to collaborate it's just how they know they know They'll sit up and know something is absolutely wrong, but come together on it. Look at how many times people have become millionaires after killing an unarmed black man when it was obvious they were wrong. But when the black community rose up and it looks like they were going to be prosecuted. I mean, the last guy, the guy that choked out the kid on the subway and killed him, raised two, some, two million dollars or something in less than two weeks for legal bills. So some kid that was quote unquote a Marine, they 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 kept saying Marine, like being a Marine is honorable in itself. I mean, you know, I, I have mad love for anybody that will put their life on the line for something they believe in. Uh, whether I agree with what they're fighting for or not, when you do that and you go out there and you represent, I'm not gonna say anything about you. A lot of them have been tricked into this whole patriotism thing as well. I, I'm not speaking against that, you know. I think there is some honor in that, but also 
there is illness in that. There is problems in this dude sit up and kill this kid when he didn't have to. And, you know, so, and they immediately came to him. That's called being on code. That's not about right or wrong. It's about being on code. And so what I'm trying to get is a time and a point and a place where we're on code where we literally sit up and we we sit up and we are on code. So what does that mean? That means supporting things that support you. Period. Coming together and being unified and being committed. Getting out of that individualized mindset of only worrying about me. That has to stop. But Karen got toasted. Um, man, I, I, I'm gonna see if I can get that video and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you guys. It was that clean. Um, and it could have turned a whole lot worse for Karen if somebody wasn't there to drag her out from behind that counter. Um, and what was interesting is the white guy didn't come and do anything to the black woman because that would have been a problem. So it's always, it's a, it's a message now. You don't want to mess with you, leave these people alone. And we need to keep sending that message. Uh, don't start nothing. But if they start it, finish it. Finish it as decisively as you possibly can. Leave no doubt of what happens when you when, when they mess with us. That's the beginning of it, but that's not the end. We're going to have to come together. On that note, that's it. Uh, thank you for checking in on another segment of Riding with Rick about to do a little quick something and then I'm going to get in for the night uh, but uh, if you believe in what we're doing go in the description box click the link let's keep it going on that note I'm out of here you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day peace